Apollo 10, this is Houston, over. Good morning, Good morning, I'm fine. Hey, we'd like to verify that you're in manual at the present time on the high gain antenna, and then at uh, four minutes after the hour, GET, go to automatic, over. You go to manual now, and then uh, in about a minute or a minute and a half, go to automatic, and it should reacquire. Okay. This is Apollo Control. Goldstone expects to have good lock on with its 210-foot antenna at 147 hours, 10 minutes about six minutes from now. Ten, this is Houston. We've got a high gain lock now. Uh, Roger, Bruce. How far away, how far out are we now? One eight four thousand nautical miles, over. And uh, range is decreasing. Yeah, the boat, they're about the same. I do. There's an encouraging sign. Uh, 10, Houston, for your information, uh, you will cross the equipotential point between the Earth and the Moon at uh, GET 14839er, and that point is 179,000. 525 miles out from the Earth. Over. Roger, is that about where the computer switch is over? Uh, Roger, it's very close. Over. You know, but it's of academic interest, isn't it? Roger. Bruce, how soon are you going to be ready for the uh, TV? It's going to be about five minutes yet, Dan, over. Okay, fine. It'll take us that long to get it all set up. Roger that. And uh, Bruce, would you, would you check and find out what our hydrogen potential is down there? Uh, in terms of a tank loss and also in terms of our purge capability for fuel cell one. Okay, stand by and we'll get that for you. Apollo 10, this is Houston, over. Go ahead, Jack. Or, yeah, Bruce. Uh, Roger, uh, with the hydrogen that you currently have available in both tanks, you have a Two zero. That is a 20-hour continuous hydrogen purge capability, which you can split up among the fuel cells any way you like. Uh, if you lose one tank and power down to 50 amps, 50 amps, you can get by until 225 hours GET, or a little over 30 hours after anticipated splashdown. Over. Ah, oh, that's great, Bruce. Thank you very much. Oh, it looks like you're in good shape. Uh, Bruce, I'm a little confused on how you want me to handle a high gain now. I'm, I'm in auto. Uh, you want me to go to react, and are you switching back to Omni uh, D, or, or how do you want us to handle this high gain for the TV? Uh, stand by. Stand by. Goldstone does have acquisition and is ready to receive television when the crew uh, sends. Apollo 10, this is Houston. I've got your antenna op plan here. Uh, Roger, stand by. And Are you ready for the TV? Roger, we're ready. Hello, Houston. This is Apollo 10, 184,000 miles from Earth. Apollo 10, this is Houston. Uh, Roger, we're not receiving the picture yet. 
I'll give you a mark when it starts coming in here. Okay, we're sending. Uh, 10, this is Houston. It looks like we're going to lose your high gain antenna in about 30 seconds. Suggest you wait until we reacquire the next rotation on the high gain. Over. Roger. Okay, uh, will you give us the mark uh, when that will be? And, and go ahead. Uh, are those react angles still good? Uh, Roger. Uh, what we'd like you to do is we'll command Omni Delta when uh, we start losing signal strength here. And then you should go manual on the high gain antenna, and we'll give you a mark when to go back to automatic, and we'll switch you back into high gain. This will uh, eliminate uh, any LOS. If you stayed in uh, automatic react, uh, we'd have LOS about 36% of the time. Uh, you're not in close enough yet, though, so that we can get TV on the Omni. Over. Okay, great. That sounds great, uh, Bruce. And uh, I'll give you a, a call when to go back into auto and try and give you a couple minutes warning uh, for the TV. I think it's better this way than if you start out and run on TV for a minute or so, then have to break it up and start again. Agreed. Houston, do we have eye game right now? Negative, Tim. Uh, Tim, this is Houston. You should be in manual at the present time on a high gain antenna. Roger, I am Jack. I'm waiting for your mark uh, to acquire high gain again. Roger. We expect to reacquire the high gain antenna in about three minutes. Apollo 10, this is Houston, over. Go, Bruce. Uh, Roger, at uh, 14723 GET, we'd like you to go to auto on the high gain antenna. We'll expect acquisition uh, almost immediately. Uh, you'll be in. AOS with the high gain for about 11 minutes, over. Oh, that's great, thank you. Bruce, what we ought to be able to do is pick up uh, the Earth out of uh, this path and pick up the moon uh, out of my right hand window at the end of the path. Roger, oh, understand uh, the Earth out of the left hand window at the beginning and the moon out of the right hand at the end. Let me know when you're going to be back to high gain switch. Uh, you're getting very noisy now. Say again. Roger, do you have a picture? Uh, not yet. We've got to get you on high gain first. Roger. Hey, we got a picture. Black and white picture coming in now. Roger. Teller will come in any second. 4,000 miles out. This is the Earth. Half Earth. It's... Hacker, Houston, this is Apollo 10, 184,000 miles out. This is the Earth. Half Earth. It's about... Uh, the of the moon right now. We have a practically a full moon. The Earth, as you can see it right now, is uh, the, the uh, Terminator is going right across the middle of the Atlantic. You see that big circular weather belt that goes up across the uh, United, up across the east coast of the United States, covers up Florida, and it appears that some sort of point is in the Gulf of Mexico between Florida and Texas. It's difficult to make out any land masses, 
And I doubt that you could see any, but with a monocular, I could see Cuba, Haiti, uh, and the uh, Indies, and, and, and most of South America, which is cloud covered. The central uh, United States appears to be open, and as well as uh, the western United States, as far as I can see. The orientation that our spacecraft is in is about 90 degrees to our plane of travel. We are pointed up with our axis, our main uh, propulsion system axis, up at the North Stars, so that we, ro and we're in a rotation called a passive thermal control mode. We rotate uh, 360 degrees at the rate of three tenths of a degree per second. And what that means is that first uh, starting with our right window, passing through the hatch window, and going through the left window, and then passing out through the optics, we have the full northern, northern uh, solar earth moon plane. And at each revolution, at each revolution we see the the, the Earth passes through the right window, the center window, and the left window, followed by the moon passing through the right window, the center window, and the left window, and the sun passing through the right window, center window, and left window. Now we're transferring from the Earth to the moon, and you can see what I mean about the parent diameter. Okay, 10, now uh, we've got the moon now, it's coming in nicely. Roger, that's the same zoom that you had when you were looking at the Earth, and you can see the apparent size relationship of the two bodies right now. Well, we have a three-quarter moon, and take it all back. Actually, on the monitor down here, 10, uh, the moon appears to be a little larger in uh, diameter yet than the Earth. That's what I said. It's about uh, twice the apparent diameter to me. And it uh, sort of looks tanned still to us. You can uh, see the Sea of Crisis very plainly, all the great seas. Uh, and uh, you notice the crater structure very clearly with those rough craters down in the southern, uh, southern lunar hemisphere. Roger, we can pick them out on our monitor. How does your uh, color look down there? Uh, the, the black and white is very clear, Tim. Uh, the color looks like it's saturating a little bit on the moon. Uh, it's okay up here, Roger. The moon is a, moon is a very bright body from here. Uh, when looking at the moon uh, through the optical system in our spacecraft, within about uh, 15 degrees or so of the moon, the stars are blanked out. So that you can't, uh, so that you can't uh, tell what constellations right now, if you're looking this way, uh, in the optics, we're behind the moon. Our uh, window system uh, on the vehicle right now is in excellent condition. We can see just as clearly as uh, anyone could ask for on all five windows.
moon's apparent diameter is larger, the uh, gravitational attraction of the Earth right now is, is going to, it's just about to take command. that the moon has the several egg shaped bumps and if you're seeing those on your screen they're, they're not real. This is around the edges. This is Houston. Roger, uh, we noticed them and I uh, guess they're characteristic of this particular uh, TV camera that you're flying. This unit. Houston, now you can watch the uh, moon uh, pass behind the right-hand window of the spacecraft. It's uh, rotating around, and it, it will be able, probably be able to pick it pick it up through the hatch window. See, it's going behind the window frame right now. Roger, amazing. That uh, shows uh, what our rotation rate is, basically. Roger, right, Tim, we've been timing you down here. It looks like about uh, three revolutions per hour. Okay, now we're looking at the moon out through the center hatch window. This, uh, this mode of operation for uh, finding out where you are with relationship to the uh, rest of the world for uh, aligning your platform uh, for knowing your relationship with your velocity vector and uh, having a, a uh, very essential psychological feel for what's going on is uh, excellent. With this kind of a, with this kind of an operation we always know where we are and where we're going and we even more important we know where to go to look for the stars which we use to align our platform. And uh, that's necessary for us to perform all our navigational maneuvers and corrections. But right now we're set up on a trajectory which is so good that uh, most of our navigational corrections are really going to be very small, it appears. gain lock when the earth is in the uh, right is in the right and center hatch window so we're probably going to be showing you the earth only out the left hand window Hi, this is Houston and Roger up Behind the uh, center hatch window now. Ten, this is Houston. We've got about uh, one more minute until we lose you on the high gain. Okay, 